Welcome to Aussie Indian and I have got Minister for Immigration Honourable Chris Bowen. Thank you. Mr. Bowen, welcome to Aussie Indian. Thank you very much. Uh, of course, this is a fantastic event, isn't it? Friends Indeed. of uh, Labour, Subcontinent Friends of Labour. What's your opinion on this group? Well, Subcontinental Friends of Labour is a great group. They represent the subcontinent community to the Labour Party and the Labour Party to the community. They spread the messages and also give us feedback about what the community is thinking and what the community is needing. A couple of things which have hit the headlines in the recent times. One is to do with asylum seekers and you have uh, recently passed a legislation to process the asylum seekers' applications offshore. Uh, given that uh, Manas Island and Nauru, uh, the two places where you have identified for processing, uh, have their own uh, political system and the judicial system which is very different to Australian system. Uh, because of the legal obligations Australia has under the uh, Refugee Convention, uh, I was wondering how it is going to, uh, how you are going to meet that legal obligation of not returning to the refugees to unsafe places. Well, Australia, Nauru and Papua New Guinea are all signatories to the Convention. We all have our own laws, but we're all signatories to the Convention. And importantly, each memorandum of understanding between Australia and Nauru and Australia and Papua New Guinea makes it very clear on behalf of Nauru and Papua New Guinea they will not return people to a country they are fleeing danger uh, if they are found to be a refugee. They will not do that uh, and they couldn't do it under their own laws anyway. Well, uh, when you wanted to send the refugees to Malaysia, the High Court in uh, uh, Northern Territory found it illegal. Uh, is it, uh, if the challenge is mounted against this, or do you think that you can defend that? Well, look, everybody can challenge, but uh, that we changed the law to enable this to occur. We've changed the law to enable uh, processing on Nauru and Manus Island. So we believe we're on strong ground. On an ethical ground, um, many people whom I talk to, including people in India, who, where I visit very frequently, they say Australia, with its landmass and scant population, should do more to absorb more refugees. What is your comment on that? Australia takes more refugees per head than any other country in the world. We go to camps, we take people out of camps, we bring them to Australia on an aeroplane, safely and fairly. I've increased the number from 13,000 to 20,000. Uh, I'd like to take it higher in time, maybe to 25,000. Uh, but Australia carries its weight. There are only three countries in the world that take many refugees from camps. Australia, United States and Canada. Uh, and so we want to keep taking refugees from camps, we want to take more refugees from camps and we want to stop people dying on boats coming to Australia. In fact, that's what I was going to ask. Uh, we have seen in the recent times people dying on the high seas, travelling halfway around the world, uh, especially the young children, who are innocent children who are dying. What's your strategy to stop those boats? Well, this is what it's all about. Uh, we've got to f we can't forget that it was only a few months ago that a boat capsized and many people died. And just one week later, another boat capsized. Luckily, more people were saved. This is what it's all about. This is why we need to say to people, there's a safer way to come to Australia. There's a proper way. Coming by boat is dangerous, and we will not have it. If you're not a refugee, we'll return you, just as we returned many Sri Lankans recently, or we will process people in a different country and won't resettle them until their resettlement would have occurred if they had come under normal channels. Well, uh, some of the political analysts say that uh, they give an example of somebody travelling with a heart attack in an ambulance. You can't come that person to come in the queue. And that's what it looks uh, the current government is trying to well, do. Well, that completely rejects the view of all those people who are waiting patiently for resettlement in camps in Australia. There are people who are waiting around the world who've been waiting 20 years, 30 years for a country like Australia to take them. Yeah, but these people have had a heart attack. Uh, I mean, No, they haven't. No, they haven't. I reject that. Uh, some people come to Australia who are not refugees. Some people come to Australia, they are no more in need of protection than other people who are waiting in camps. Uh, so we want to have a fairer and more orderly system. If I can come to another topic, Indian international students issue hit the headlines a couple of years back, as we all know. And uh, what's it your government has done in terms of making the Indian international students experience here a safe one, secure one and a pleasant one. Uh, we've worked very closely uh, with the universities and other providers. We've changed the rules 
enabled automatic post-study work rights for people who get a university degree, introduced streamlining for university study. I'll soon be uh, expanding that to some vocational education providers. Uh, when I was in India in May, uh, the Minister for Overseas Unions praised Australia's commitment and praised all the work that's occurred to ensure that Indian students in Australia have a good experience. We've found uh, that the number of Indian students coming to Australia has increased. 17% uh, higher in 2011-12 than it was in 2010-11, 33,000. India provides the second highest number of, of uh, yeah, students who come to Australia, uh, second only to China. And that's a very good outcome and we're going to see those figures continue to grow. Mm -hmm. What was the uh, dialogue between yourself and the Indian government when you visited India? What kind of assurances you gave to the Indian government? Well, the Indian government didn't seek any assurances because they know what we've been doing. They know we've been working well with them. Uh, in fact, the Minister for Overseas Indians made that very clear in a press conference that we had. That he had uh, lots of praise for the Australian government and the actions we've taken. I met with the Minister for Education. We had a similar conversation. Many of uh, the viewers uh, are overseas Indian students for our program. Uh, what kind of message do you want to give them, uh, Minister Bowen? Well, Indian migration, whether it's students, permanent, skill, family, is very valued in Australia. India is now our largest source of migrants to Australia, and we very much value that. Uh, they've made a wonderful contribution to Australia. We continue to welcome it. Will you be able to assure those students that this is, their stay here is going to be a secure one and a pleasant one? Certainly, the vast, vast majority of Indian students in Australia have a good experience, a positive experience, and enjoy their time in Australia. Uh, there can be incidents from time to time, just as there can be for an Australian. Uh, but we work very closely to make sure their stays are safe and enjoyable as it can be. And of course, uh, some of this footage also goes on the Indian network. Uh, probably uh, the chat from the taxi driver to the boardroom is all about Indian students, I can assure you, in India. What kind of message do you want to send out to our Indian viewers? What well, do the people in India, Australia, welcomes Indian migration, whether it be student or permanent. India is now our largest source of migrants and Indian students are very, very welcome and very safe in Australia. Mr. Bowen, thanks for talking to us, Indian. Thank you very much.